Everyone bases their game of the year videos on shit like gameplay. They never ask the important stuff like for example, is the game more fun than driving a forklift? No, they never are, forklifts win every time. Before I unveil the top 2, let's roast all the other games. I have played every game that came out this year, but Stardew Valley is the only one I can remember. Not because it was the most memorable game, because it was first. And if you're not first, you are last. But I can't award it, because the creator did an update with a bunch of free content. So I don't know if it's good anymore. Another game that got an update is No Man's Sky. They released a base building update. When people compared it to an early access game, they were joking. They didn't mean go for it. I could give this game the award, but the chances of that are incredibly rare. Not my biggest disappointment of the year. That award goes to Mankind Divided. After the events of the last game, Jensen has become an alcoholic and therefore had to move to Prague. Gameplay is super polished, so why fail on the story? I have a feeling it's because so many people complained about Augment Your Pre-Order. The ending is extremely abrupt. You are playing and... I have spent 7 hours to come up with something witty to say about Gears 4 and so far I have nothing. And maybe that sums up the game. I did not think the series would survive this long and apparently it's good, but Microsoft Maybe it's time to take Gears of War out to the barn. If Game of the Year was based on scale, not quality, Pokemon Go would exterminate the competition. Never got to play it. An app being accessed by 5 billion people is going to be down. A lot. For us YouTube people it was great. You throw together a video in an hour and get like 300,000 views. I would never do that though, because I have morals. But you don't have to capture Pokemon in a sad, abandoned industrial zone, you can travel to Aloha. Welcome to Pokemon Sun, where classic Pokemon have been mutated because of nuclear testing. The new Pokemon game is in Hawaii. For God's sake, Game Freak, you are missing your chance to put a game in North Korea. Imagine the game starting with your family being executed. The North Korean Pokemon could look like regular Pokemon, except thinner. We'll call it Pokemon Star and Missile. In the Final Fantasy series, we have played as the Chosen One and Knights for six games, then terrorists, high school students, one athlete, and a brick wall. Now, finally, we get to play as a boy band. The game takes place in 1995, and then this purple haired guy steals the Royal Pogs collection. That might not have been the story, but I don't speak Japanese, so what do you want from me? I think 15 might be the first Final Fantasy game to take place in current day or near future, therefore it's false marketing, because then it's not Final Fantasy, it's Final Contemporary. On the topic of Japan, development of The Last Guardian was started by the League of Nations, now 100 years later it's out, and it's alright. It was going to be released back in 2011, maybe it would have had a better chance competing with games like Dark Souls, Uncharted, Deus Ex, Battlefield... Wait. You play as a little boy and you have a bird dog named Trico. Sounds Latin American. Is that why they have a hard time communicating because the kid can't speak Spanish? The animation is beautiful. This is why I fucking hate video games, they have to ruin everything with gameplay. Strategy games. XCOM has an 88% of Metacritic, so this is clearly a miss. Not so fun when it happens to you, Firaxis. Firaxis also made Civilization 6, a game I can't play yet because I don't know how, as they have removed advisors. They changed the graphic style to cute and cartoony, so they had to replace Denmark with Norway. But why no Venice? He's been a staple of the Civilization franchise ever since uh, the last expansion. AI is dumb as a rock. So all in all, Civilization 6 is going to be fantastic in a couple of years. Five dollars for a new Civilization. Fuck off! While we're talking about DLC, Total War Warhammer is the game that I have played the most this year. It's not my favorite game of the year, just my slowest. But it can't win because it's a pretty obvious ripoff of Warcraft. It's even more disgusting that War Warhammer managed to rip off Warcraft 11 years before Warcraft was made. There are two more strategy games, but I'm going to talk about them in the classic segment.
There were two huge Swedish games this year. I am of course talking about Stellaris and Hearts of Iron. Stellaris is uh, bad. And because it's a grand strategy game it took me 30 hours to realize it's bad. I like Hearts of Iron though. But it gets old rather quickly as you can only play as Hitler. Or maybe you can play as other countries, but I always play as Hitler. But there were huge Swedish games this year, so let's talk about Danish games. I don't know the difference. Hitman was episodic. Was that a good business decision? Scared me away. Also, you call this next gen graphics. This is what happens when a country doesn't have mountains. Okay, let's move on to this year's two gigantic Swedish games. Unraveling Cluster Truck. The division was made by three programmers and like 700 3D modelers. It's so detailed, if you look at the game through a microscope, you can see they 3D designed the molecules. It has PvP, where you can compete with other people to see who's the best at cheating. It did fantastic but died a quick death. Why? I think it's because it's set in New York. New? Aren't we jumping ahead a bit? What's the problem with just York? Battlefield is my third most played game this year. Lots of problems though. In the single player you can't play as the fun guys, only the tea people. So no flying with the Red Baron, instead spend time with these whiny twats all day. Kids these days, your great grandpa fought in the Napoleonic Wars and he didn't complain once. The guy on the cover fought for the French army and therefore France is not in the game. Because DICE hates France. They weren't in 1942, they weren't in Nam or in 2, but surely they were in Battlefield 3. Look, there's the French flag. But look at the name, Netherlands with a sideways flag. Someone ate a bad croissant. Everyone asked for a sequel to Mirror's Edge, but no one wanted to buy it. Might have been because it was bad? No. I'm gonna blame the consumers. Not a single person asked for a sequel to Watch Dogs, but they made it anyway. And a lot of people like it. In Watch Dogs 2 you play as a mass murdering sociopath. You and a bunch of cunts are fighting something. The first Watch Dogs was the most serious game of all time. This one is not, so no thank you. I demand to be taken seriously. Uh oh. Uh... Let's skip this one. Mafia 3 might have been a financial success, but it's shit. The best thing about Mafia movies is when they eat. But we are not Italian anymore, we are in New Orleans. Whatever, I assume they eat food in New Orleans. No, apparently not. The game doesn't even have restaurants. This is why no one likes this game. One more game belongs in this category, but it also fits in... Jesus Christ, what the fuck EA? For some reason they decided to release it between Battlefield and Call of Duty, successfully killing the game. Why? Did one developer say that an executive had bad eyebrows? I'm not gonna give it game of the year because I base my judgement on sales. Good sales equals good game and that's a fact. Another overlooked title that deserves way more attention is Overwatch. I myself made two Overwatch videos and I'm planning to make 17 more. Each one more confusing than the last and that's not a joke. The game's success can be attributed to fluid combat and interesting hero. <laughs> what? It's Overwatch porn. That's it. You brilliant bastard. We are against it. Yeah, I'm sure you are. But my first video became outdated within hours after upload and I know you did that on purpose, you cheeky duckweeds. I wasn't going to play Doom because 70 gigabytes. That would take an hour to download. No Man's Sky had quintillions of planets and that was like 3 gigabytes. You only have Mars, you lazy wankers. I can't recommend it to anyone because it's fun. I'm sorry, is that what people want now? Fun? I remember when playing video games was considered a profession. If I wanted to have fun, I would do drugs. To get rid of this funness, I need to torture myself. The world of Dark Souls is sad yet beautiful. <coughs>
I'm, I'm sorry, Dark Souls isn't a giant piece of shit. But Bloodborne came out last year and that's way too recent, therefore Dark Souls 3 is actually bad. Only one person has done a perfect recap of the game's story and he never played the game. He watched someone else play it. He's not gonna say it's because Dark Souls is missing an easy difficulty, because then Dark Souls fans would go berserk. So instead I'm saying Dark Souls is missing a very easy difficulty. 10 out of 2. Another game that begins with D is Dishonored 2. Oh. I'm sorry, I see they haven't fixed their typo yet. Let me retry. Dishonored 2. I need a date for prom. It's one of my favorite games this year. Many had frame rate issues, not me, because I hadn't updated my drivers. I am serious. Laziness saved your game. Can't recommend it to anyone though, because there isn't an achievement for killing everyone. And also I had to pay for it. I'm a YouTuber, goddammit, I shouldn't have to recommend stuff I wasn't given for free. Like how Microsoft paid me to talk down this game. Game. Except for all those positive things uh, critics have said and a little bit more, there is literally nothing positive to say about this filth. Worst game of the year, Naughty Dog start making racing games again. No one cares about humans and their emotions. Blam this piece of crap. Number 2. DC Movies But Killian, DC Movies are terrible! I thought so too, before I realized they are doing Wizard of Oz. We, the audience, is Dorothy, and at first we encounter a movie that doesn't have a brain. Da -da 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 -da. And then another movie, a very shallow movie that doesn't have a heart. Mark my words, Wonder Woman is going to lack courage. 10 out of 10. And number one, the US presidential election. When the Yanks made Ice Age, we were like, they peaked. The moon landing was a joke. But after this election, yeah, they, they peaked, but they are getting pretty close. There was this one guy who said a bunch of stuff. There was something about emails and a cartoon frog. Masterpiece. I'm looking forward to the sequels. And that is the Killian experience. Follow me on Twitter. Sometimes I make some funny jokes that will make you go ha ha.